Episode 71, Facing a Crime Lord Xander's original intention was quite simple. He didn't want to lose money, and Kate wouldn't be able to pay that much. So he thought about it and tried to convince her to sell some shares to cover her costs. After all, the shares were quite valuable. It was also what he needed the most right now. But who would have thought that Kate would say, Thank you, Xander. She seemed to be ready to leave. This sentence of thanks was quite valuable, costing Xander $10 million per word or more. When Xander's eyes were filled with confusion, Kate smiled and spoke again. Xander, although you love me, I can't let you pay so much for nothing, right? So, do you think this is a good idea? When we completely defeat Frank, this traitor, I will give you 10% of the shares, not only to thank you for your help, but also to repay the $48 million. Please don't refuse me when the time comes. No matter what, you can't refuse me. This is a token of my appreciation to you. After saying a few more words of thanks from the bottom of her heart, Kate left with Zack. Xander watched Kate and Zack get into the car and leave in a daze. He muttered in shock, You think 10% is a fair trade for $48 million? This sinister move was completely made by Zack. On the way back, Kate still asked, That old fox might not agree, right? Zack replied, What can we do if he does not agree? He will break all pretenses of cordiality with you and force you to go to Frank's side. He will let you and Frank work together to deal with him and slap him into pieces. Unless he takes away his wild ambitions. Otherwise, these $48 million can only be paid by him. Just wait and see. He will most likely look for you tomorrow. But we will not talk about the shares. We will only talk about how to work together to deal with Frank. He will keep the loss in his heart for tonight. He will wait until he has finished dealing with Frank before he can take it back from you. The facts prove that what Zack had said was right. The next morning, not long after they started working, Kate was called into the office by Xander. After coming out of Xander's office, Kate immediately went to find Zack. You are absolutely right. Xander really did not mention about the money at all. He only discussed with me about using the shares to pressure Frank to death. You are really amazing. You have calculated everything. You even got me a diamond necklace for free. How about this? Do you want a necklace or money? If you want money, I'll use my connections to help you sell the necklace. Kate was talking nonstop when Zack interrupted her. I told you last night that the necklace is for you. Huh? Kate only thought that it was Nathan's words last night. She did not expect Zack to really give it to her. But this gift was too expensive. She could not accept it. Kate refused again and again, and Zack left immediately. He never took back the things he gave out. When she returned to the office, Kate looked at the sky-high diamond necklace and felt embarrassed. Zack, giving her such a valuable necklace, did it mean something? When she thought of this, Kate only felt her little heart beating rapidly, and her face was so hot. When Kate's heart was moving, Nathan was so angry that his heart was about to explode. Last night he did not have a good night's sleep and made some medicine to make Claire, who took the initiative to deliver herself to him, suffer till dawn. Now that he opened his eyes and woke up, he thought about what happened last night and still felt angry. It was simply too detestable. He had lived so long, but he had never been humiliated like this before. Furthermore, he had been humiliated in public. The most detestable thing was that the one who slapped him in the face was that bastard Zack, whom he couldn't care less about. This kind of person wasn't even worthy to be mentioned in the same breath as him. What right did he have to do this to him? The more he thought about it, the more annoyed he became. Thus, Nathan lifted the blanket and revealed Claire, who was still sleeping soundly. He grabbed the slippers on the ground and started hitting her without saying a word. He hit Claire, who was sleeping soundly, until she woke up screaming. Let's put it this way, when Claire got off the bed, she could not walk properly. After going to the bathroom, she lowered her head 
and looked at the place where she was hit. She kept cursing Nathan in her heart for being abnormal. He was not human. At this time, Nathan had already dressed up. He drove his Ferrari out in a carefree manner. Regarding the matter of Zack humiliating him last night, of course he would not let it go so easily. And his destination for this trip was to teach Zack a lesson. After coming to the most luxurious hotel in the city, Nathan tidied his clothes in the hall in front of the mirror. Then he took the elevator upstairs and arrived at Presidential Suite 18. At the entrance of Presidential Suite 18, there were two black men standing there. They were wearing black sunglasses, a black shirt, black pants, and black leather shoes. It could be said that they were black from head to toe, just like their profession. As soon as Nathan approached, one of the black men reached out his left hand to signal him to stop. At the same time, his right hand touched the back of his waist. Although it was not revealed yet, Nathan could see the outline of a gun on his clothes. He quickly smiled and said, Man, don't be like this. I'm here to look for Susie. We have an appointment. Please, inform her. Sister Susie was a famous crime lord in this part of the world. It was rumored that she had personally sawed her enemies into bits with an electric saw and stewed them in a large pot. Nathan felt frightened when he thought of that scene. However, it was precisely because of this that he felt that he could absolutely rest assured when he looked for Susie. After the black man informed him, Nathan was finally able to enter. After obediently entering the presidential suite, Nathan stood in the living room with his hands pressed against the seams of his pants. At first glance, he looked like a soldier with a standard military posture. Raising his head, he looked at the woman who wore a black nightdress and sat cross-legged to smoke on the sofa. This was the first time he had seen Susie. In his fictional knowledge, Susie should be a big and rough woman. She was in her 40s, and she might even grow a strong beard. However, the truth was clearly different from the fictional knowledge. Susie was only 26 or 27 years old, and her figure was especially good. Her appearance was also very charming, and it was easy to tell that she was a beautiful woman with just a glance. However, in the next moment, he quickly lowered his head in a daze because his gaze was focused on Susie. At that moment, Nathan felt as if a knife had stabbed into his eyes and was about to gouge out his heart. In order to hide the panic in his heart, Nathan hurriedly greeted her and told Susie everything she wanted to know. Susie, there's a small figure called Zack. I hope you can help me break his legs. I found someone else to do this before, but that Zack knows Kung Fu. So I can only ask of you for this kind of thing. Don't worry, I know the rules of the underworld. One leg is worth two million dollars, and it has no connection back to you. Susie gently combed the messy hair on his forehead and said, Put down the photo. Nathan quickly went forward and put the photos of Zack that he had secretly taken on the table. He also put down a bank card with a password on it. Then he said that there were four million dollars in the card. Susie reached out her slender hands and used her fingers to grab the photo. All right, let's go out. I'll satisfy you. I will definitely satisfy you beyond your imagination. After leaving the room, Nathan gritted his teeth and sneered. In his opinion, Zack's means of transportation for the rest of his life would only be a wheelchair.